tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Computer animation. Computer animation. Computer animation. Let's get started with animation. Hello friends, today we talk about camera animation. I show you three examples of uh, a very simple scene with three types of camera animation. This is the first one. Now here comes the second one. And here is the third one. Now, what is the difference? Well, the first one is a turntable animation. A typical computer animation method to visualize things. The camera circles in an exact circle around the objects, so we get a nice overview. It's under Animation and Visualize. And please make use of the Option box, because it gives you options about the length of this animation. In my case, 400 frames. Let's have a look at the second one. This is a keyframe camera animation. I created keyframes with a camera and I tried to simulate a real cameraman in reality, so to say, how he or she approaches the scene, the characters, etc. I created this basic scene and here is the camera. I set one keyframe after the other. Actually, I'm using a camera with uh, an aim the aim is uh, set fixed at a fixed place in the center of the scene, more or less. And uh, then I just move the camera, not to rotate the camera around the objects. So the uh, camera always looks at the same position, sort of, and um, but moves around quite wildly. I don't know if this is really good. That's why we go to example number three. The example number three is very interesting because it does not simulate a real camera man or woman. It is a real camera man or woman behind it, although we're in a 3D scene. How is that possible? Well, it's possible with the new LiDAR scanners which are built into some smartphones and in my case in the iPad Pro. I think it's the fourth generation. What I do is I use an app and I filmed parts of a sitting room while moving the iPad back and forth, left and right. This is a very natural motion. You can see the steps. I'm walking and I'm walking back, etc. That makes it a natural camera. Let me demonstrate you how that how the result is. We see on the left hand side the 3D animation and on the right hand side the original and it's basically the same camera animation. Even the focal len length is the same. This is slow motion. I made it half speed in order to see things properly. Let's go outside. This is the user interface of the app I was just talking about. It's an augmented reality app which shows me that tracking is good and I'm defining the floor and I'm setting locators into the scene and they stick there as you can see and I'm moving back and forth and relocating things in the scene. Now I set my point here at the corner and two more on the stairs. This 
the last locator now in the middle of the lower pedestal and now I start that you, you see the timer starts at the very top of the of the screen I'm recording the camera animation and uh, this is what you'll see later in the scene because I'm trying to rebuild this scene in 3d I land at the end of this camera move well on the sort of on the chair takes a while until I get there but now I'm approaching this chair with the rotten magazines or newspapers on top of it files land immediately on the iPad and from there I can drag drop things into Maya and here are the files which the app which is called by the way CamTrack AR CamTrack and Augmented Reality programmed in England excellent app and uh, with the unpaid version you can set one locator in my case I set three locators or five actually five in the open space thing and uh, three locators in the in the sitting room scene so let's try this this is a 3d object with 158 kilobytes and I just drag and drop it into this scene actually I want to show you something before we do this um, you should in order to get a better better overview go to Windows settings preferences preferences and in the middle are the settings and in the settings you ch should change the default which is centimeter to meters because now this is not one centimeter but this is one meter the OBJ file is the one we want uh, here for example is the movie file which we've just seen now you see the locators here and when I press F here they are and since we're in dimensions of meters the camera is pretty small this is the camera and I can of course scale it up like this now all these this this red part here is keyframes 2035 frames and when I just show a little part of it uh, you see each frame has a keyframe of the camera animation of course you can simplify that, uh, the camera anima animation but um, this is what the camera does this is exactly my motion outdoors retreats and then it moves forward to the goal what you should do is you middle mouse track the camera from the outliner into here and then you see the camera motion then you look through that camera it's an amazing transfer from the iPad with the LiDAR scanner which measures the environment so precisely I sort of rebuilt that scene with a corner and with the steps the two steps nothing really fancy in the daily routine of compositing that means adding 3d content to a real-world video you would have to match the exact size of the original video with the rendering of your camera including the frame rate but that's a different thing and Maya is not a compositing tool so you would typically get the original footage from somebody and then use the light information you see that it's diffuse lighting for example then you introduce a global illumination uh, light for example and um, then you build your scene and then you render out the alpha channel uh, together with the RGB channel and then hand it over to people who work with for example After Effects in order to make the composite the mixture between the two elements the the original footage and the 3d elements uh, I did I think one or two tutorials about uh, 
this compositing thing, but only with still images. This would be uh, more advanced now, and I don't know if I really want to go through that effort to match the original with the 3D content. To wrap this up, camera tracking was very, very costly. You had to have cranes and motion control systems, very expensive, not ten thousands of euros, but one hundred thousands of euros for the, the equipment. Now you can do it with a standard smartphone with a LiDAR scanner. Uh, the LiDAR is not absolutely crucial, but it uh, works much more precisely than just the video. And of course, you should try these things out. And the app is amazingly cheap. It's under 10 euro, so in the paid version, and you can always try it out with the free version with only one locator. In my case, I set three locators in the sitting room and five on the outside, and um, it worked just fine. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.